Have you ever used balsamic vinaigrette to pick a lock? Do you often dream things that happened just as you dreamed them? Do you occasionally find yourself envious of a bird's talons? Have you ever fired an emergency flare off your starboard bow, only to wake up face down in a bowl of soup? All of those questions were false. Fiction. 100% a means of pulling your leg. Kind of just waking up and choosing violence. But save for one final question, perhaps the most chilling of them all. What if you weren't an artist? In some ways, this question is sort of impossible to answer. It almost immediately crosses into a sort of philosophical or metaphysical discussion of what makes you, you. And this ain't Vsauce and we're not building a ship of Theseus today. It's also pretty easy to cheat this question too, right? What if I wasn't an artist? Well, the easy answer might be I wouldn't draw anymore, but I would still be a sculptor or musician. I'd still find some way to keep creating. And it makes sense, because as much as some other people might not have the slightest interest in creating things, it's hard for us to think about a life where we aren't so keenly driven to creating or making. So for me, if I was going to answer this somewhat personal question in front of a few thousand of my closest confidants, I'd probably try and use that easy cheat at first. As something of an art generalist, I'd just try to find some other way to use that outlet. Would I be something I already spend some time doing, like more 3D work or streaming, model or toy making? That's all still kind of art related, but would it be something that I've developed a proficiency for even though I'm still not the most comfortable with it, like communicating or teaching, like on this channel? Would I pursue some of the things that I find creatively nourishing now, like cultivating the land or taking care of animals? See, I tend to think of a programmer, a doctor, a banker as someone on the complete opposite mental spectrum as me. It'd take quite a drastic difference for me to end up in one of those camps. So no matter what I would capital D-O do, who would I be, even with this important part of me missing or fundamentally different? I'd still have the quirks and neuroses I do now, and hopefully some of the good qualities too. I guess what I'm trying to say is I'd be the greatest esports champion you've ever seen, and everyone should be grateful I'm shackled to this creativity thing, or I'd, I'd be coming for the crown. So what is even the point of asking this question, what if I weren't an artist, if removing such an integral part of us might even fundamentally change us into something unrecognizable? Oh, there's value. There's value indeed. There's actually two huge benefits to this thought experiment, so give me a second here. As artists or as creative people, we like to assign a lot of our identity and self-worth to what we do and create, often to the quality and even quantity of it. It's a little hard to avoid doing that because it ends up being so important to us and ultimately it feels like we're giving a part of ourselves in the process. Now the flip side of that, if you want to think about it in storytelling terms, might result in us being what we'd call a one-dimensional character. But who cares, right? It's just a reflection of how passionate and driven you are. Well, here's the first benefit to thinking about our question. Think for a second of someone who assigns all of their identity, self-worth, and emotional health to the success of their favorite sports team. Now, let's make up a fake sports team so no one's offended. We'll just pretend there's an NFL team that's never won a game. We'll just make up something like Detroit Lions, something like that. Now, what happens to this person who is so bought into the success of a sports team that they can't control when the Detroit Lions lose? What happens when the ending of a show or movie you have entrusted your entire personal identity to is really disappointing? What is left of that person? Now, it's a little bit better when we are in control of the creative things that we do and make, but the same thing still stands. What happens to us if our whole identity is wrapped up in our work when it doesn't do well? When we release a new comic or animated short and it fails on some level? When someone attacks or insults our work, when we go through burnout or block and can't create as easily or even at all. It's like someone putting all of their money into one stock or even betting or gambling it all. It could go well, but what happens when it doesn't? If we've gone through this hypothetical question of who would I be if I wasn't an artist, we can hopefully see the other elements of ourself and have a better defense against a failure of or attack on our work. Just because our creativity is a big part of our identity, it doesn't have to be our entire identity. And that kind of leads to the second benefit of this question. It's sort of like a similar question of 
what would you do if you won a huge amount of money? Now, there may be a few surface level answers of the things you buy or where you could go, but then it calls up deeper questions like if money no longer mattered, would my job matter? Would I keep working there? All of this starts to lead toward the question of is there more to me as a person than what I do and what things matter the most? I think I've brought this up before, so if you can give me a second, you can see I, I don't bring it up to be like resentful or something. But I would say that probably the majority of my friends in real life either are ambivalent or don't really care about what I do creatively. Or maybe they're aware of it, but it's just not important to them. Some of them are still supportive, but only a few really regularly watch videos or keep up with what I do. I can barely keep up with what I do sometimes, so I... I get how exhausting that can be. Now on one side of this, you might go, gosh, I wish more people that I know would care intently about this thing that I'm so passionate about. And sometimes that can sting and the support is nice. But you know what the flip side of that is? It means that this person likes and values you for something other than that creative thing. Actually, they value you for you being you, not for doing what you do. They like your company, they appreciate your sense of humor, your merit and character, and just maybe not your character designs. When we're hyper-focused on a creative pursuit, we might allow the rest of ourselves to fall by the wayside. If we do that for too long, either allowing external pressure to do more or our internal drive or passion to push us too far, we can run the risk of becoming a sort of husk or shade of what could otherwise be a very well-rounded person. And ultimately, we could spend all day talking about the benefits that striking this balance can have on your work, that everything leads back to the work being better, that rest and everything that's otherwise secondary leads to perspective and creative recharge and even improvement. But the work doesn't always have to be the point. Younger folks sometimes have that elevated charge and passion. It becomes easily exploited by jobs that ask more than they should of them. Now, one of the ways that this manifests, as I can attest to when I was younger, is the ability to pull all-nighters, giving up sleep and rest because what you're doing is more important, either because of a deadline or the desire to keep going overriding the natural need. Now, that works a few times, depriving yourself of sleep in every direction. It may even be a necessity for a while, but eventually, it has to catch up with you. You either end up too tired to function, you surrender to the need for rest, or you straight up reduce your life expectancy down to nothing. You have to start striking a balance. It's like putting all of an RPG character's points into one stat. Yeah, you have 100 attack, but you also have zero defense. So how does that end? On the outside, a self-examination like this can help to further develop that artistic voice, the things that you want to say, and makes you a more interesting person. But more importantly, on the inside, leads to you being more balanced and fulfilled, to being more than just what you do or can offer. Despite everything, it's still you. So funny enough, the seeds of this idea and video actually came last year when I was playing the new Animal Crossing and realizing, you know, a huge part of my identity artistically is creating things that's very similar to the Animal Crossing aesthetic. You cute things, delightful things, little animal characters, right? And when that's equalized or the default, I find myself going, you know, I don't have a very good fashion sense or interior decorating sense. What does my little in-game avatar look like? And what does their house look like? What, what is that identity? And it spiraled down into this video. I'd love to hear from you in the comments on this idea. What if you weren't an artist? Does it resonate with you? You don't need to get insanely personal, just your credit card number and the three digit code is plenty. Or alternatively, what sorts of videos would you like to see more of on this channel? It's been a while and I love to kind of keep up with your pulse on that front. This video is part of a series that we call Artistic Mindset here on Character Design Forge. Yeah, it ain't a tutorial on how to draw character hair, but it's just uh, as vital to check what's under the hood so that we can make things and emerge better. There's a couple other videos sort of in this same realm of topic that look like this. You can find more on the Artistic Mindset playlist. Right now I'm hard at work on the Stormfellers animated pilot. I sincerely hope that you'll be back to check that out when it releases. I'm going to be sharing a quick update on the project with patrons pretty soon. And either way, subscribe and turn on notifications to stay in touch. We have a new Biko's backpack for November featuring a Koji hard enamel pin and one half of the Glow Pups, Glow Pup Axia as our foil trading card. You can grab that over on patreon.com slash bageldenizen. Speaking of bageldenizen, 
That's my at on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok. And my course, Learn Character Design, is available at learncharacterdesign.com. Thank you so much for watching, and have fun being. Yeah, I like that. Have you ever run out of the time you've got and go back to playing Animal Crossing New Horizons Happy Home Paradise DLC on your Nintendo Switch? 